very strong part of my growing up. I think the theater I grew up in was my church. Uh, that was my first theatrical experience, was in my church. I went to a wonderful church, a Protestant church, a fairly small sect uh, to most parts of the country. It's called the Disciples of Christ Christian Church, but it's a rather liberal sect. Uh, not a lot of dogmas and a lot of, not of do's and don'ts, uh, but fairly ritualized for a Protestant sect, I guess. And uh, that was my theater, and that was, um, that was the first place where I sort of performed and, and felt those kind of spiritual movings that actors feel about the theater. There, there was a quote about you that you gave up the preacher idea when you encountered women well, when girls I found, in those well, days. No, when I found out how serious I was going to be about it, that's <laughs> I, I decided that maybe it wouldn't do well for a minister to have those kind of inclinations that strongly. <laughs> All the time. All the time. Every day. No. No, that was sort of, uh, that's sort of my joking way of saying that it, it, it finally just seemed not to be the right kind of thing for me to do. Did your parents support you making this big jump from Kentucky to New York to act? Well, my mom did. I, it's very, would be very, I think it'd be very problematical if my father had lived longer. He died when I was 15. And we never really got to that point where I've always missed it. We, we weren't adults together. You know, I was still a boy, and we hadn't quite crossed that bridge where we started dealing with things as two adults. I think it would have been difficult for him, and ergo then it would have been difficult for me. He wouldn't have minded me being an amateur actor, but making my living at it would have been, a, I think that would have been a problem for him. Too bad he didn't see how it turned out. Huh? Yeah, he, I think he would have been. My father was a, a bit of a show off too, and I think he would have loved it. And he would have loved the fact that you know I got to, to act in front of so many people and do so many wonderful, fun things. Because he liked to, he liked to do things, and he did amateur things, and he liked to sing, and he liked to be in shows. I think just the earning the living part, and it not quite being the thing that a man would do to earn his living, that would have been the difficulty. Your range of acting, Ned, is simply extraordinary. When I think of Tennessee Williams to Deliverance to Superman, that's what you thrive on, apparently, or is it? Well, I. I love to say now occasionally that I don't have to act anymore. Psychologically, I don't have to be an actor. I don't have to take another part. Is that really true? I think it is. I love the process and I love doing it. And when I'm involved with it, it's a total involvement. I, I think it's as much fun as anything I've ever done. I don't feel this burning desire to, you know, have this part or that part. Or, and I'm very interested in the production side of the business, which is the truly crazy side, where you're nuts enough to try to get some project done because you think it's worthwhile. So that's a lot about what's happening to me on a day-to-day -day basis. I still love to act. I just don't feel like I have to do it. That's what's the best and the worst thing, quickly, that come to mind that you've done in your life? Wait, what's the thing you're most proud of and the thing you're least proud are we, of? Are we eliminating this to acting? Or no, just this is everything? a personal Ned Beatty. Oh, personal Ned Beatty, the best and the least thing? Oh, my goodness. I've, I've been married three times, and I feel uh, I carry around a lot about the two marriages that didn't work. I have a wonderful marriage now, and I feel very blessed by that. But I'm still working on those other two somewhere back there and you know in, in the recesses and, and wishing that they had worked, quite frankly. Did you learn anything about those marriages, why they didn't work? In very broad terms, uh, and I wish that I knew more and I wish I could take more of the responsibility sometime than maybe I want to. Uh, I know I was responsible as, you know, at least 50% uh, of it, but um, I think that on, on the negative side and on the positive side, oh my goodness, I don't know, my children? I have eight children. Eight children. I'm very blessed with children. And uh, From different marriages these Yes, ages? three different marriages. Yeah. But uh, Dorothy was the youngest. She was just three this week. And Dorothy's kind of special. Is she? Dorothy's wonderful. Well, I was making up the kids at Dorothy's birthday party, and, and her, one of her friends, a little friend, he's in the play group with his name, Kip. And Kip, I asked him what he wanted to be made up, and he wanted to be a queen. So we made Kip into a queen. And we, Gave him, you know, wonderful makeup. And Dorothy marched up. I said, what do you want to be, Dorothy? And she said, her hands on her hips, she said, I want to be the king. <laughs> so I made up Dorothy as the king. Dorothy is wonderful. All my children are wonderful, but Dorothy's just had a birthday. You're, you're a religious sort of a person, too, aren't you? Well, I'd love to be able to say that. I'm not sure if I can make that statement or not. Well, I know you're, you're a church goer, are you not? A yes, choir well, member? Yes, church is important to me. I'm not sure I'm religious. I uh, sing in the choir, and, and yes. I, religious has a connotation of, of a kind of constancy I'm not sure that I can <laughs> claim. In, in, in having this kind of orientation, are you ever offended by some of the movies that are made out here? Sure. And, and not just from the standpoint of religion. I mean, some of the things that we do, I think we go overboard. And 
I, I, we're too exploitive sometimes. I, we're, we're in an exploitive business, obviously, and, and uh, I, some, I think we go too far sometimes, and it upsets me. I, not basically on a moral side, let me say. Uh, I'm not offended by what happens morally within the story, what actions take place. It's what we're saying within the story itself. I mean, storytelling is a way of, of trading value. And if I don't like the value, that's where I kind of get off. I don't mind what the characters do as long as the value in the story we're telling is worth telling the story. Does Ned Beatty get enough parts to really sink his soul and his teeth into, or does he find himself, he's got to do a lot of parts and he enjoys doing it, the money is nice, but is he really sinking, is, is, is he getting enough actor's protein? <laughs> <laughs> actor's protein? I don't, you know, I guess no one ever does, I, if, if you were totally honest with yourself about it. but. I love the process so much, and even in the simplest things, the very things that look like they don't have anything to them at all, there's something about the process of it, and there's something about the whole, all the tricks of becoming present, no matter what it is you're present to do. Those are fascinating things. And sometimes it's so much harder to do the, the thankless role, or the role which is not showing at all. And some, I don't know, from our side, from the technical side of it, that's very rewarding too. You're going to be around a long time, and I'm oh, very happy you, about that. <laughs> thank, thank you, Nick Beatty.